Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corlick from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and welcome to Playlo. This is all my video game pickups for the month of May 2022. Uh, not a crazy month. As you can see, I got some packages. I also went to a great convention called Midwest Gaming Classic. It was actually my first time ever going to that convention. It's it's the biggest one in the Midwest. It's in Milwaukee. Uh, if you're on the East Coast, the big convention is Too Many Games. That's the big retro gaming convention. The West Coast, as well as, frankly, like the world. Uh, Portland Retro Game Expo in Portland, Oregon is the best. But in the Midwest, Midwest Gaming Classic is the biggest one. Um, and I, I, it was my first time ever going there. I was a guest. It was a great time. You know, they gave me my little badge here and everything, <laughs> which is cool. Actually, fun fact, uh, the guy who runs this convention is uh, the guy who basically created the Dreamcast independent scene. So we kind of had that to bond over, which is pretty cool. So, uh, But anyway, uh, at that con, uh, I was given some stuff. Uh, I also bought a few things, but not a whole lot because... Uh, I, not only was I there as a guest, I also brought the Sega Pluto prototype with me and I, you know, I had that set up so that people could play it and all that sort of stuff. But, uh, I kind of stayed glued to the table as a result of it because I wanted to keep an eye on it. Like, I have friends who would check on it every once in a while and all that, but, you know... For the most part, I just kind of stayed to my table. Uh, but that said, uh, you know, there, there were some random things. I'm going to show you a couple little oddities. Um, I got, uh, there was a dude named Thor. His actual name is Thor. Uh, he makes these, like, little, like, uh, wooden, you know, like, uh, artwork bits. Uh, this is, like, a coin. <laughs> and this one uh, is, a, is a Super Mario Brothers 3 thing. I think that's really neat, so thank you to Thor for that. Uh, I was also uh, hanging with this guy named Steve, who runs uh, Tetris World Order, uh, which is, uh, I believe, a Twitch streaming uh, service. Or a Twitch channel sorry he gave me a sticker and he also gave me a t-shirt with the exact same uh, logo so that was really cool of him to do he also we also filmed footage of him stealing the sega pluto as you can see uh that was pretty good <laughs> and then for some reason his pants started falling off uh but anyway yeah so we had a good time um also a couple shout outs uh for other people as well we got to hang out with my buddy dave we hung out with uh, from my discord if you're not in my discord you should be by the way do me a favor uh check out the social media stuff in the description like the discord twitter instagram patreon all that sort of stuff uh facebook Facebook, etc. I appreciate that. Um, and you, you know, a lot of that stuff is, it's all freaks at Patreon, obviously, which by the way, thanks for the support. Um, but uh, we were hanging out with them. We we're also hanging out with my buddies from the Metal Jesus crew. So like Jason was there, obviously, John Riggs, John Hancock, uh, Kelsey Lou, and uh, one of my, my best friends, actually. Um, and so we all went to dinner at some point, and it was just a good old time. But I'm also bringing some of my buddies from the Discord. And the reason I mention them specifically is one of them, uh, his name is Zesty, or at least that's what he goes by in the Discord. He also gave me a couple of just random things. Uh, at one point, he just walked up to me, and he's like, here, I think you need this. It's a bar of soap. So I was like, what? What are you saying, man? Like, I put deodorant on, I showered. Uh, and he, it's funny. Um, but no, this is a Halo-themed Dr. Squatch. Uh, it's Spartacus Scrubs. So this is Halo-themed soap. Right on. Thank you. Um, what are you trying to say, man? <laughs> like that I don't clean myself enough. Uh, the other thing he gave me was this. Uh, I guess uh, I didn't even know this. Midwest Gaming Classic was uh, doing like little indie releases. Uh, this is the Midwest Gaming Classic arcade pack for the NES. Um, and he actually, I guess he bought an extra and he just hooked me up with it. So thank you very much for doing that. I was certainly not expecting that. But yeah, Goat Store Publishing on the back. If anybody in the Dreamcast scene remembers, Goat Store Publishing is the ones who created the Dreamcast independent scene. Feet of Fury being the first game. They are still very much active. Uh, and by the way, Slave, which if you're into the Dreamcast, you've probably heard about that game like a decade ago. Uh, is still coming. I talked to Dan for a while about it, and he was like, "Yes, we're you know like we got a new programmer. There's the blah, blah, blah. like it's happening." <laughs> like, and so that's all I'll say. Um, so yeah, that was really fun. Uh, but the only things I really bought there uh, was some OG Xbox games. Uh, for those who don't remember, because you've only heard me say this a hundred times, um, and instead of hundred and one, which will finally make it settle in. Um, I'm going for a full, global, complete set of the original Xbox. I have now every European release, every European exclusive, sorry, uh, of which there was like 88. Uh, every Australian exclusive, there's like four. And then Asian exclusive, which is like 48 Japanese plus one South Korean and one that's either from like Taiwan or Singapore. It's called Damon Vector. It's like the hardest game on the Xbox to find. Anyway, I have all the Asian ones. It's ironically the North American ones I'm still missing a giant chunk of, so great context in which to get them is at conventions. So these are in no particular order, nothing really special about any of these. It was just ones I needed. Uh, we got Test Drive Off-Road Wide Open, uh, Major League Baseball 2K7, 
Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, which I was surprised to find out I didn't have this. Uh, Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events, based on the Jim Carrey version of that. I think there's a new Netflix show of this now, but I'm not totally sure. Or at least it's coming. I don't know. Um... MX versus ATV Unleashed. Uh, there you go. Uh, it's surprising. Like one of the uh, one of these. The no, it's not this one actually. But MX one of these games is actually one of the OG Xbox games. It's compatible with the Xbox One and Xbox Series X. Oddly enough, but I don't think it's that one. Um, and then Beatdown Fists of Vengeance, uh, which is a Capcom game. I was kind of surprised to find this one, actually, at least within financial reason. Uh, a lot of the Capcom stuff from that era is worth a lot more money now. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Just cool to get some uh, OG Xbox stuff. That was the end of pickups from Midwest Gaming Classic. Like, there were people who get crazy amounts of stuff. But like I said, I, I wasn't really out buying a whole lot. But what I uh, ran, when I randomly when I came back, I, I got a package that I opened, um, and it was from uh, GG Retro Gaming. As it turns out, um, shout out to GG Retro Gaming. He's been doing this like every month now. <laughs> he just sends me something, um, just like a random game. So I'll put a link in the description to him. Check him out. Uh, he's got an online store where you can pick up games there. Um, usually pretty good deals too. Uh, I think uh, there's also a coupon code there as well. Uh, but he sent me this. I never know if he knows I don't have them or he just picks random stuff because sometimes he does send me things I already have. I, he's Steve's a cool guy. Um, or Steven. Uh, anyway, he sent me this. IL-2 uh, Sturmovic Birds of Prey. Uh, this is like, you know, World War II airplane shooter. I really like these types of games actually. Um, I, I got into, uh, what was that? Uh, I can't even remember now what the name of the series was. Uh, Wings of War, or was it that? There was there was a few different random ones that like were pretty good. Ubisoft did one that I thought was Blazing Angels. That was it. Uh, Blazing Angels was quite good. Um, and after that, I there was Secrets Over Normandy that Lucas film or Lucas Arts did. There was a whole bunch of these around that time that were suddenly very popular. I don't think I ever played this one. Uh, Five Hundred Five Games makes me a little worried, but <laughs> at the same time, uh, this is like you know who, how many years ago. Uh, 2008. So, 505 Games wasn't totally terrible back then. Um, or maybe, I don't know. Well, we'll see. Uh, I'll check it out at some point. But either way, got that. So, thank you. Huge shout out to GG Retro Gaming. Um, now with all that said, package time. Um, so some of this stuff, I know what it is, including the big thing. We're going to save that for last. That's a, that's very much a me thing. Um, but I, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, actually, there's only one I truly don't know what it is, and that's this one. Uh, the others I can, some I actually know, and some I can hazard a guess. This one I don't remember. This, I know that this was sent to me, uh, somebody reached out to me, I'm going to look, uh, let's say A. Bonafonte. Um, I, I remember you messaging me, dude, and I remember you saying that this was a game, um, and that you wanted me to have it, and I said no, and you did it anyway, and whatever, but still, thank you for that, but I'm trying to remember exactly, I don't think, he never told me what game it was, I don't think, but, uh, let's take a look. Inside, we got the game, and we have a note, oh, that's right, okay, now, okay, now I remember what this is, uh, yeah, Dear Adam, enjoy the copy of Stubbs the Zombie. Uh, it's a fun romp that plays well. I pre-ordered the OG Xbox version back in the day and kept it ever since. Hopefully more Lost Gems uh, get Switch ports. I assume all music was still in the public domain, so the soundtrack should be intact. Keep up the good work on YouTube. Sincerely, Whiskey. And then he put on his full name and then crossed it out, so I'm assuming I'm not supposed to say that, but so thank you, Whiskey. Um, yes, now I remember this. Yeah, he bought an extra copy of Stubbs the Zombie because he works at GameStop. I remember this now. Um, yeah, and he, uh, yeah, he was big into the uh, original Xbox version, which uh, I don't remember if I have the original Xbox version. I think I do, because um, it's on. Obviously, I want it. If I don't have it, it's on the list. But yeah, I, I forgot that this got re-released on uh, the Switch as well as the PS4, and probably a digital version on Xbox One. Ironically enough, this is the Canadian version. Um, you can tell it's well. First of all, it's got the American flag and the Canadian flag on it, and it's got English and French. Um, but yeah, that's that's cool. But yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I. Uh, that'll be cool to have a, a more up-to-date version of it. But he's got a point about the music. So the original version, I remember seeing this, like in the corner it had a big deal about all the music involved. I actually do have a, a music CD of the OST of this game. I don't remember where I got it. I think it was like Mo Game Con one year. Uh, where it was just given to me. Um, but yeah, the, that ha there was a big deal to music in this game. That's probably why you mentioned it, because I don't know if the game's music was changed in any way, shape, or form. But either way, Stubbs the Zombie, Rebel Without a Pulse. This was a big deal on the original Xbox back in the day. So thank you very much uh, for that. I appreciate that. 
Um, so uh, moving on, we have uh, whiskey. I just want to say anything. Whiskey. Thank you, whiskey. Um, <clears throat> moving on though, we have a few random packages here. This one. I can guess that this is probably a Switch game. It comes from France, and usually when that's the case, it's from um, Pixel Heart. Uh, Pixel Heart does not typically tell me when they're sending me anything. Stuff just kind of shows up, so we'll see. Uh, but that's that's my guess at the moment. Um, this is no, this is Gunrio Two, Hakuma Kojiro. This is Pixel Heart for sure. But it has no. There's no note or anything in there, but yeah, this is... Yeah, okay, that's awesome. It is Pixel Heart. Uh, this is a PS4 release. I think this is the first time they've ever sent me a PS4 release. So yeah, huge shout out to them. Gone Rio 2. I, okay, I was totally wrong. I just assumed a Switch game. Um, uh, Miyamoto Musashi is back in Gone Rio 2 to defeat his old enemies and finish an ultimate fight faced with Sasaki Kojiro. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know anything about this, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's really cool. Um, uh, no doubt, uh, you know, an indie game that they were cool enough to pick up and publish, and obviously cool enough to send to me. Uh, thank you very much for doing that, I really appreciate that. That's, that's pretty cool. It's, it's clearly, like, Neo Geo era inspired. It looks like a side-scrolling, like, action platformer type of game. Uh, maybe something akin to what would have been super popular on like the SNES and the Genesis and all that, but the art style kind of looks more like Neo Geo era. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Thank you very much to the guys over at Pixel Art. Appreciate that. Um, moving on, the rest of these I'm pretty sure I know exactly what they are. Well, I know for sure what that one is. Uh, so let's see. This package comes from the UK. Uh, this is this is if this is exact if this is what I think it is. This is. Uh, good guy points for these guys. Let's just make sure this is actually the correct thing. Uh, how do we get in this package most efficiently? So they put one of those, like, yeah, there's a ripping strip. They kind of put tape over that, which makes it harder to get to. Okay, yeah, there it is. Okay, this is the replacement disc for a, a Dreamcast indie game called the Texter Sys, which they actually include a nice little uh, label with. Uh, this, this bears a, a little bit of an explanation. Uh, they included a, a letter, which is just the order form, which is just nothing. Um, okay, so this is a, a Dreamcast indie game that came out last year. I actually did an entire video about this game. Um, and I recommended it. I thought it was pretty cool because it was the first Dreamcast game in like 20 years to meaningfully use the keyboard. Like the whole game can be text or says. The, the whole game can be played with the keyboard. Um, and you can play without, it's just, it's recommended to play with the keyboard. However, uh, Head Up, which was like, they're like a legitimate, like, Austrian publisher, like, they do, like, bigger games. It was kind of surprising to find out that they were, uh, doing a Dreamcast indie. Um, but anyway, the game came out, and it was, it had a, uh, series of bugs in it that made certain levels unplayable, like, they could not be completed. Um, and everybody was like, how did you miss this? And I remember calling them out later once I found that out, because I was like, Shame on you guys that, you, you know, you're giving a bad rep to the indie Dreamcast scene by putting out unfinished games. Um, but to their credit, um, they eventually said, that was our bad. We're fixing that. So they redid the, they went in, they fixed the bugs, they, they, and they printed off new discs. And if you bought the original release, they'll just mail you this for free. So heads up on that. Um, check your email, the, or like check their website. Uh, this is what's called the exercised version. So it comes with this little envelope and it has the uh, replacement disc. And the disc art is completely different. I, I, I don't have the other one in front of me, but I, I know it is. I'll put, I'll put them side by side. But um, yeah, this is very definitively the different version. And this, so this version should be uh, you know, bug-free. It should be completely playable. And maybe it has other additional changes. I'm sure there's a complete bug release on their website or something. Think of it as like a physical patch. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the whole game. So that's, that's very cool. So props to them for doing it, like, you know, to, for fixing that. It's unfortunate this was ever necessary in the first place. But that said, you know, good on them for actually, you know, solving the problem and then mailing that out for free. So thank you very much for doing that. Um, and so, yeah, that's cool. Uh, next up, we have uh, a book. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure it's a book. <laughs> uh, this, I'm pretty sure I know exactly what this is. Uh, this is probably Lock On Issue 3. Yep, there it is. <laughs> uh, oh, there's something else in there. Um, so Lock On is a uh, publication. There you go. This is a, a, a big like collection of uh, written works, kind of formed into a book, like a not a magazine, but not quite a book either. 
Uh, closer to like a graphic novel, except it's not that either. Um, and it comes with this little foldable paper Dreamcast. It's got a little ad from uh, Wave, which is a is now a Dreamcast indie publisher. Ironically, it had nothing to do with Texas or uh, Goat Store or anything like that. But these guys are putting out stuff I've made videos on. This one also came with uh, little cards, it looks like. Um, so what's the big deal with this? Uh, this is cool because this is a collection of written works by various people. Uh, it's got interviews, it's got writers, artists, all that stuff. But if you look on the back at the writers, the first name might catch your attention. It's me! <laughs> yeah, I wrote an article for uh, Lock On Issue 1 and Lock On Issue 3. I had nothing to do with Lock On Issue 2, but they were still cool enough to send me one. Um, in the first issue, I wrote about... Um, the Nintendo PlayStation prototype back there. Uh, it's history, all that stuff, my experience with it, because, you know, I was actually the last person that ever played that. I don't know if you guys knew that. The Nintendo PlayStation prototype? I was the last person that ever played it, and I got that verified later. Um, so, but that's a different story. But anyway, um, this one, they asked me to come back and write more about the Dreamcast. In this case, specifically, what I ended up writing about was uh, the uh, lost Dreamcast games, like the, you know, the unreleased ones that kind of got dumped and eventually we found out more information about. Like, there's hundreds of those, like, where we just have, like, at least a name of something. But there's also a bunch where we know more about them, games like Propeller Arena and Half-Life and all these sort of ones that the, the public is more conscious of. So I decided to focus on those, tell their stories, and, you know, kind of a, a, amalgamate it all into one artwork. Or, well, a, a written work, sorry. Um, I'll let them do the artwork because I can't. I draw stick figures. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so that's very cool to see that in physical print. And uh, they just sent this to me for free. So if you guys want to support them, I appreciate that. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Um, I don't know how many physical copies there are because the first one sold out before I even got mine. They were cool enough to give me one. But there's digital releases if you just want to read the articles and all that. But uh, huge shout out to them. That's very, very cool. So just cool. Uh, uh, John Linneman also wrote in this too. So there you go. <laughs> From Digital Foundry. Uh, so thank you guys over at Lock On. I'll put a link in the description to them. Um, and finally, we have a package from Limited Run Games. This has uh, this is not this is the I just realized like looking at the camera that I'm actually wearing a Limited Run shirt. I bought this. They did not send this to me. Uh, this is something I wanted for a very long time that I'm sure a lot of people are going to mock me for, but it's got to happen anyway. Um, and it's huge, as you can see, and I'm just I'm super excited about it. Uh, let's get into the package here. This this was something that was on pre-order for like. 18 months <laughs> it was like a long time like I've heard people complaining about that and I'm like so what let it come when it comes it's fine <laughs> we have looks like two separate boxes in here there it goes okay pretty sure I know what this one is first let's go ahead and slice that open this must have been a pain for them to to ship man this is, this is a lot of stuff uh, what's the most? All right, this way. <clears throat> this is intense. Okay, cut through there, cut through there, slice down that, and okay, we're in. What do we got? Oh yeah, we have the vinyl collection set for Shenmue Three. Yes. Uh, so this is a a full. This is, wow. <laughs> uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's a, I'm pretty sure there's 11 vinyl records in this thing, uh, both of which are double sided, so you can kind of think of it like 22. Um, that's all the music of Shenmue 3 in, in record form. That's really cool. Shenmue 3, the definitive soundtrack. They actually, uh, I got the, the, the CD version of this. I showed that. A couple months ago, I think it was, but uh, the records weren't quite done. There was a, an option to get this signed by Yu Suzuki, but first of all, I have a bunch of stuff signed by Yu Suzuki, and I've met the man multiple times, and he knows who I am. So it's like at some point, I'm like, you know, I'm not going to pay to keep getting his signature. <laughs> but anyway, so very cool to have that. Um, I, I, I will open this at some point because I want to listen to it. Um, unfortunately, the better record player I possessed was in the... Uh, house with the fire. I don't know if you guys know that still or anybody doesn't remember, but I had this big house fire not here But at the house I grew up in and the better record player was there and the, the record player survived But it needs to be restored and that insurance is dealing with that. It's a different process anyway So I won't be able to really fully enjoy this uh, For a while I have a record player here that was donated by a guy named Spock Avriel like 
years ago. I don't even think he watches the channel anymore. But uh, that one still works, no problem. It just doesn't have like you know the good speakers. I just have like chintzy little speakers for it, but still very cool. Um, but it's all probably check that out. <clears throat> the other thing we have here, which is probably contextually obvious if you uh, can see that, and it was all packaged together. Let's get through that. Okay, we have. We have a little card. This whole box is for this tiny little card set. There you go. That's what. Oh, that's cool. There's a Power Rangers card. I was not expecting that. You put Power Rangers and Shenmue all in the same package. You know, I'm gonna be pretty happy. Look at that. We got two Shenmue figure cards. We got Rio and uh, Shenhua, and then we got uh, the Red Ranger, aka Jason, aka the guy who was just arrested for fraud for 20 years. That's a real thing. Look that up. Uh, and fighting Goldar. <laughs> yes, I'm not kidding. Austin St. John, who played Jason the Red Ranger, was arrested for fraud. For something about, like, uh, stealing COVID fu tax fu uh, funds or something uh, as part of the CARES Act or whatever. It's a whole thing. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I'll fix that up later. <clears throat> and inside, we have what we actually were here for. We have, well, we have plastic bits and we have cardboard. That, there you go. These are... Wow, that's pretty cool. They, they wrapped the packet. They must have gotten used to this. They wrapped the package in these little plastic cone things so that the ends don't get bumped. That's pretty neat. I've never seen anybody do that before. Um, but anyway, there it is. This is the Shenmue 3 Complete Edition. Um, this was this was put up on pre-order like a year and a half ago and not a very popular pre-order. Um, even in the Shenmue community, this was one of those like, what, really? Because like... To be fair, I love Shenmue. I love Shenmue 3. I don't care. I know there's a lot of people who didn't like it, whatever. I did my review on it a long time ago, and all I'll really say about it is, what did you want? It was more Shenmue. It was unapologetically more Shenmue. It never said it was the end of the series. You know, that's it was never going to be. <laughs> like, even Yu Suzuki was saying that for 20 years. He was like, Shenmue 3 would not be the end, but everybody kept expecting it to be this really simple game where you just kill Londi. It's like... That's not what Shenmue is. Anyway, um, so it was unapologetically like the next section of the game. Should have been longer? Should more of the story have unfolded? Absolutely, I agree. But was what we were offered bad? Absolutely not. It's just not what people expected or wanted because they thought we were going to get like the complete thing, which was never the case. <laughs> but anyway, so hopefully Shenmue 4 happens. I still believe it will, uh, but that's a different story for another time. That said, when this was put up for pre-order, a lot of people were, even in the Shamu community, were like, there's already been so many different versions of Shenmue 3 released. Uh, you know, Shenmue fans like myself are psychotic. You know, we, we collect like every single variant of the game that we can get our hands on. I even have the Russian copy, okay, of Shenmue 3. Um, so there was already a big collector's edition. You know, there was a whole bunch of stuff. So then we were told like, oh, there's another one coming up like, three years after the game came out and it was like that's strange um and it's also very expensive like together this was this was probably the most money i ever put down on a single game if you want to think of it that way now granted there's a whole ton of stuff that goes with it but it's expensive <clears throat> and the thing that i think really irked people is that uh, the the game that's actually in there is not the same release that already existed. The original release of the game is, of course, the PS4 build of the game, but um, all the DLC and the patches were not built into the disc. This is the complete edition where they decided, okay, all that stuff is built into the disc. So all the DLC, all the patches, the complete final version of Shenmue 3 is on physical, on disc, only in this set. You cannot get it independently, which a lot of people were like, I would be willing to buy just that disc again, but the, that was not an option. It was not up for sale. Um, and I will say that that, had, that was not Limited Run's choice. Let me, let me put it that way. I, I know whose choice that was. It wasn't Yu Suzuki's. It wasn't Limited Run's. There's another group involved. It's not Sega for people putting that out there, but I won't say who. Um, but anyway, that, there was somebody else's choice that that could not be a thing. And so, anyway, <clears throat> that's how this came into existence, is uh, a lot of people looked at it like this was limited run, just trying to get away with something, oh, it's expensive, and they're making me pay for this thing. It wasn't them. That's all I can say. It wasn't them. They did you a favor by even allowing this to exist. Let me put it that way. Um, but yeah, this collector set, there's, I'm going to keep it sealed because I don't really want to open it. Um, I may eventually do that just because I would like access to the, the disc. Um, but this one has a bunch of cool stuff in it. There's like 
Uh, there's a sword in there. There's a little Chobuchan thing in there. There's, there's a whole bunch of goodies, but there's unboxings all over YouTube about it. I, for now, anyway, I want to keep this sealed up. Um, one thing I wish it had was like, you know, on the back, it, like it just had an itemization of like everything that's in there, but it doesn't, there's nothing like that in any of those boxes. That would have been nice, just like a list of everything that's on it, but that is not the case. Um, the side work, artwork is pretty good. It's kind of weird they put Chai on it because he's barely in the game, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, that, that'll that about do it. I'm very happy to see this stuff. I'm going to crack that open and listen to those pretty soon. Probably, yeah, I'm on the fence about what I'm going to do with this because currently I don't need to do that to be able to play this, this version of the game. Um, I know that this version didn't sell all that well. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of people who actually bought it, so I'm assuming down the road this is going to be like the impossible one to get. But then again, that's the problem with collector's editions is that people think they're going to have value, so everybody does this, and then they have no value because everybody did this. Predicting what's going to be rare and what's going to be valuable is very difficult. <laughs> but that said, it doesn't matter. Uh, thank you guys. To, thank you guys over at Limited Run, even though I did pay for this. But thank you for having this exist. Let me put it that way. I appreciate that you guys went to the trouble of making this exist when, let's just say, a different group did not want that to happen. Uh, thank you to the guys at Lock On for hooking me up with that. Thank you to the guys at Head Up for doing the right thing and having that exist. Thank you to the guys at Pixel Heart for sending me this. Uh, thank you to Whiskey for sending me stubs. Uh, thank you to GG Retro Gaming for this 360 game. Uh, thank you to Zesty for sending me a bar, or giving me a bar of soap and an NES game. Uh, thank you to Steve. Thank you to Thor. And thank you to the guys at Midwest Gaming Classic. And thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Check out the social media stuff in the description. Thank you very much, and I'll see you all later.